All right. The 10 biggest lies of the enemy. The 10 biggest lies of the enemy and how to combat them. 10 biggest lies of the enemy and how to combat them. Okay, you guys, we are on day eight and we're finishing up chapter two today. We're finishing up chapter two. It was only a couple pages. I am gonna go back and just, we're just gonna reiterate this scripture that opened up this chapter. You know, I, I said I felt like it was sort of like our thesis statement for what we're doing here. Um, from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. For although we are in the flesh, we do not battle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our battle are not of flesh, but are enormously powerful, capable of destroying fortresses. We destroy arguments and every pretension, raising itself against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. I hope you guys are sort of realizing, if you haven't already, that we can recite these scriptures and speak them over ourselves, almost reprogram our minds even just with the scripture. Like, like the renewal of your mind can begin to come these are thoughts that you can use to replace the thoughts that have been negative and weighing you down, you know, maybe even for years and years and years. Our thoughts are merely a dialogue with ourselves, you guys. It's like speaking to ourselves. So there's so much power in our thoughts. And if they've been negative for a long time, you've made these thought pathways in your brain. And then whenever world and life stuff happens, it comes through these the filter the gateways of our eyes and our ears and all of our senses and it just sort of trickles into these thought pathways and if they've been negative in nature we have to form new thoughts we have to make thought different thought pathways and so using the words of scripture using statements like this and the truths of scripture about our identity you know about who god says we are if we can pull out those tools in the midst when we catch ourselves on a negative thought pathway we're reprogramming our mind. It's a pivot and a new thought. And if we do that enough, you know what happens? We make a new thought pathway. It may be very unnatural at first. It, 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 may, it may be very unnatural because it may be natural for us to, to just think these negative thoughts. We, we think them without even realizing we're thinking them so many times. They've been with us for so long. But so scripture verses like this are very powerful. There's a lot in here, you know? We're in a battle. That's the first thing. We're in a battle. And it's not a battle of our flesh. It's a spiritual battle. But our weapons are not fleshy weapons either. The weapons to win this battle are not, are not weapons of the flesh. They're not weapons of this world. They're heavenly. It's a heavenly arsenal that are enormously powerful, capable of destroying every stronghold, every lie of the enemy, every pretension that raises itself against the truth of God against the knowledge of God. Every lie that we have came to believe will be, will be overcome by this heavenly arsenal. We will take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. Our thoughts become the thoughts of Christ. That's what is said here in these like three, three verses. Powerful stuff, powerful stuff. All right, get you some of your favorite scripture verses and just write them down and speak those over your life. All right. That wasn't even what I had written down today. <laughs> I love it when that happens. Okay. So, I just wanted to open with that scripture verse. All right? Because we're wrapping up chapter 2. And we've talked about in chapter 2, we talked about the armor of God. We're talking about our weapons, the armor of God, and how it's not just um, things that we put on. Okay? As we grow, as we utilize these tools of this armor, it sort of becomes us. It becomes our identity. Remember, we're getting back to our identity in, in Christ, who we are as children of God, instead of who the world would have us be. So we take on that armor, all right? So we talked about fellowship. We talked about sacraments. We talked about scripture, prayer, the intercession of the saints, being of service into in the world, spiritual practices and renunciation. So these, this is our arsenal. These are our big guns. It's not all inclusive, but it's it's the big guns that we use to fight this battle. And you know, the author very clearly states today that they are essential to a life of freedom, 
Um, however, it is quite possible to engage in all of these practices and still be in bondage. All right. Um, and what makes the difference? And I, I believe what I took away from what the author says, I love how he went to Luke and he was just able to find in, in Luke, it was Luke 2, uh, verse 12, talked about um, that they, the sign for you will be an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, okay? The infant is the way to freedom. The swaddling clothes, they, the, the, that was so interesting. We can swaddle ourselves for comfort we can swaddle ourselves for protection, but if we're not careful, that same swaddling will keep us from finding that freedom. Very, it, there's a fine line here. And so we have to be very true to ourselves. We have to, we have to go deep to those wounds, to that bondage. We have to ask the Lord to shed light on that stuff. Satan would love for it to stay hidden away and swaddled in the dark recesses of, of denial and um, ignoring the fact that it's there, okay? Um, I, I, you know, I'm a therapist. I can't tell you how many times I see people who have tucked away their stuff so deep that you have to just dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. You, like, we may know it's there, but just to convince them to try to bring that to light for freedom. Okay, Satan would convince us that the stuff that's happened to us in our life doesn't matter, that it doesn't affect our present day. That's a lie. It's just not true. You know, we have to be careful that these same tools, these same, ars the, these same weapons in our arsenal, you know, don't become unhealthy attachments. You know, I had felt convicted to share what I felt the Lord sort of showed me about community we can't allow these things to become an idol a replacement for jesus jesus is the way to freedom these are tools and resources that we use in this journey to freedom but we we have to it, we have to maintain this right alignment that comes with discernment that comes with spending quiet time and with really reflecting on the things of god asking the lord to continue to reveal things to you you know, we will find freedom along the way, but the, we will never be completely and totally free until we're in, in the throne room. Satan is going to continually try to throw a barrage of things at us, and we're going to gain freedom. And if we're not really careful, he's going to slip back in the back door and try to take it away from us again. We have to continually renounce the things that, um, you know, that we have been freed from. It, it's a constant, it, it, it just becomes an awareness we don't have to be tired from it. Remember, our energy comes from the spirit, okay? Um, we just have to realize that we're in a battle and we're always going to be a battle because Satan is trying to steal our soul. He's trying to steal our peace. He's trying to steal our joy. He's trying to steal our happiness. And the battle's already been won in Jesus Christ. And this is more about reclaiming our freedom, reclaiming our identity, okay? Um, we just have to make sure that this swaddling... Um, if we swaddle our wounds, protect anything or anyone from messing with them, it causes us further pain. It's, it's, it gets locked away in this deep, dark place. So, you know, we've talked a lot about bringing this stuff to light. And, and I feel very certain that you guys have started to realize the vows that you might have made, uh, things that we've come into agreement with, vows that we've made from a place of judgment. I feel like if you've been watching for the last couple of days and reading in the book, you're starting to think like a warrior. You're starting to think like someone who wants freedom. I, I believe it's safe to assume that if you're on these, on these lives and you're reading this book and you're following along with us, that you're here because you truly want to be free, you know, and, and when I read this today, it's not really in here, but I think this is the time to say you really have to assess whether or not you have a love-hate relationship with your bondage. Because I think sometimes we get so used to it that we think it's just a part of us. I would just challenge you to think, think heavenly thoughts. Think a new thought. Jesus didn't die so you could be in bondage. Okay? He, did, he died for your freedom. He died for your freedom. He rose and overcame sin, evil, and death. Okay? So... 
Just because you've lived with it for 30 years doesn't mean that it's a heavenly assignment for you to live with it. Okay? His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And so we have to really be honest with ourselves and ask ourselves, do I have a love-hate relationship with my freedom? Because, or with my, with my, do I have a love-hate relationship with my wounds, with my bondage, with my pain, with the, with the things that plague me down? You have to ask yourself that because if you've lived with it for a long time, it may be really scary because you may not know what life is like without it, all right? And if we're not real careful, we can sort of want to be free from it, but be really scared to be free from it. So this is the time to press into that. And this is the time to ask for that faith, more faith, increase our faith, increase our faith, grow our trust, Lord Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. You know, we have to really be honest with ourselves about that. All right. We really have to be honest with ourselves. Ask the Lord to come in and shed, shed light on the truth. We're going to be working next on, on the biggest, on his biggest lies. All right, um, that's, that's sort of, this was the summary today. All right, Jesus is the answer. We have to keep our eyes on Christ. We have to keep our eyes on Christ. What we've talked about, we, we've, we've spent some time trying to get to know our enemy, okay, and his tactics and how he works. Jesus is the answer. And, and what, you know, what we talked about in chapter two are some of the ways, it's, the, it's how we're gonna get there. It's the tools we're gonna use in this fight. All right, um, our identity is in Christ Jesus. Our identity is as a child of God. You know, I, I wrote down freedom is in Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit as we reclaim our true identity as children of the Father. Be loved, be loved, perfectly loved. Perfect love casts out all fear. He loves you perfectly. Go back and read Romans chapter eight. And, you know, I would just challenge you today to spend some time. Carve out an hour, okay? Carve out one hour, one hour, one holy hour. Pull up an image of Jesus on the cross, okay? That's the greatest love story of all time. That is the greatest love story of all time is to gaze upon Jesus on the crucifix and just look at his wounds. Think about the last 12 hours of his life. That's how much he loves you. That's how much God loved you that he sent his only begotten son for you, for you. Gaze upon that for one hour today. Spend one hour. Will you not spend one hour with me? Isn't that what Jesus said to Peter, James, and John in the garden whenever he went to pray and they kept falling asleep? Will you not spend but one hour with me? Spend one hour gazing upon Jesus on the crucifix to see how much he loves you and prepare yourselves ask him ask him to show you your wounds ask him to prepare your heart for the next 30 something days he will he loves you he loves you you are outrageously loved he loves you with a love like no other he loves you with a love like no other so spend spend that time preparing yourself we're going to get into chapter three tomorrow and we're going to talk about how we're going to battle the lies okay we're going to talk about how we're going to battle the lies, but let's just spend today, let's just spend today preparing our hearts. Let Jesus love us today. Gaze upon that. Enter into that. Remember, enter into that. Like, let him show you how much he loves you today. He loves you with a perfect, outrageous love. We have to be able to fully accept that love. We have to be able to fully, and if you don't know how to accept that love, ask him to show you how. He will. He's going to meet you there. He's going to meet you there. He loves you. He loves you because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you. Because that is who he is. He can't be anything else. He can't be. He can't be anything but love because that's all he is. He just is. He is. He is love. And he loves you. So, be loved today. Be loved. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.